There is a beautiful legend which speaks of the South Atlantis, the sunken continent of Lemuria. There, there were dense ancient jungles inhabited by beings different from any others of an own. Unique creatures which arose in an independent world, isolated from the rest of the continents. It was a land of marvels and surprises. The animals had followed their own evolutionary models, giving rise to prodigious beings. Life had a second chance to experiment with prototypes, and the results were astonishing. There, the reptiles still ruled over the land. The plants acquired surprising forms, and in the thicket, hidden in the shadows of the jungle, lived strange men, silent, graceful ghosts, relatives of our own species, which were given the generic name of lemurs, the most emblematic inhabitants of Lemuria. According to the legend, Lemuria, like Atlantis, sank, but isolated in the Indian Ocean, a fragment of that fabulous continent remained, a solitary island where the animals would generously guard the secrets of their origins, a refuge for a wildlife that would later astonish the world, Madagascar. This is a Sifaka, a member of an extraordinarily unique zoological group. They are not monkeys and nor are they related to dogs. They are not insectivores and are entirely unlike the squirrels. Nonetheless, they do share with us distant ancestors from a time when the mammals fought for supremacy over the earth. They are lemurs, prosimians. The very name, a Roman word referring to spectres, gives an idea of the mystery and legend they inspired among naturalists and zoologists from all over the world before they were able to define their taxonomy. The legend of Lemuria is not as ancient as Plato's Atlantis, and therefore it took less time for the mystery to be resolved. Its creator, the zoologist Philip Lutley Sclater, suggested the story in 1874, and Wegener's theory of continental drift once and for all destroyed the legend of the southern continent. But despite the fact Lemuria was revealed as simply a myth, the great doubts concerning its origin did not end with the theories of Wegener because the strange independent beings of the island of Madagascar suddenly refused to conform to preconceived zoological models. Sclater himself drew the attention of the scientific world to the peculiarities of the creatures of Madagascar. There, the animals bore no similarities to those of the nearby continent of Africa. There were no large pachyderms, antelopes, giraffes, or lions. There were no monkeys or felines, and yet there were great affinities between some of these creatures and the most archaic animals of South America, India, and the Malaysia-Australia region. Where had these beings come from? What was the origin and the relationship of these children of the legendary Lemuria?
While these species of the world competed in a no-holds-barred evolutionary race, Madagascar developed at its own pace. Here, the hunters and their prey changed more slowly, away from the influences of new, much more specialized species, which natural selection was creating in the different continents. And in Madagascar, the distant world of the Triassic remained latent, producing a parallel evolution which generated the island's extraordinary zoology. A collared iguana observes a cricket that has abandoned the safety of its tunnel. Reptiles and invertebrates must have been the most common living beings in what is now Madagascar when it became independent from the continental lands, as at that time the earth was ruled over by the dinosaurs. The legacy of those days remains alive here on the island of Madagascar, where there are over 300 known species of reptiles, of which almost 90% are endemic. The dinosaurs disappeared as in the rest of the world, but the reptiles took over and lay claim to supremacy. These little dragons, which today divide between them the different habitats of Madagascar, indicate, however, that the children of Lemuria hold the secret of their origins. Because many Madagascan reptiles are related not to the reptile families of Africa, but rather to those that now inhabit the distant jungles of South America, Indo-Malaysia and Australia. And it is there in the heart of the still surviving jungles of remote southern countries that our search for the origin of the strangest fauna on the planet begins. Two hundred million years ago, the lands of the southern supercontinent Gondwana began to break apart. This was the birth of the continents as we know them today. At that time, vast jungles covered the lands of the southern hemisphere and the dinosaurs were the undisputed masters of creation. But there, deep in the dense Mesozoic vegetation, hidden among the shadows of a world ruled over by giants, already breathed small creatures with hair, the first mammals, a lineage that would eventually conquer the world. The Australian night fills with living shadows in the prehistoric forests of the Atherton Plateau in the northwest of the country. Small shy creatures like this brush-tailed opossum must have been the precursors of all present-day mammals. In the jungles of Gondwana, the huge dinosaurs simply did not notice them. But their warm-blooded bodies, their ability to keep their children inside them until they were completely developed, and their astonishing adaptability were to be the keys which would enable mammals to diversify and take over the world. All that was needed were the changes that would allow them to demonstrate their evolutionary potential. And those changes rapidly took place.
When Gondwana broke apart, the mammals were still scarce and primitive. A newly arrived group in a world which already for 3,000 million years had nurtured forms of life. In places that have since that time remained isolated, we can still today find clues as to what those first mammals must have been like. And in Australia, the largest of all, descendants of the most ancient group of all still survive. This strange animal is one of the few remaining representatives of the monotremes, a group of mammals so primitive that they still reproduce by laying eggs. The isolation of Australia meant that these ancient animals were not forced to compete against the more modern mammals which would develop in the still connected continental masses. Today, duckbilled platypuses and echnids like this one, another Australian monotreme which looks like a prehistoric hedgehog, have remained as testimony of the time when mammals were just beginning their successful development. Small insectivores, egg-laying monotremes and primitive marsupials, which developed in the isolation of Australia, were also to be found in the prehistoric jungles of Gondwana. But 50 million years after the peculiar mammals of Australia began their solitary life, their primitive insectivores began diversifying, evolving towards the groups from which would emerge the lemurs, all the monkeys of the world, and even man, the primates. And at this crucial point in the history of evolution, Madagascar began its existence in isolation. The fragmentation of the continents would mean an unprecedented revolution in the history of life on Earth. Approximately 200 million years ago, the southern supercontinent broke apart, creating Australia, the Antarctic, Africa, Asia and South America. 80 million years later, Madagascar and India separated from Africa, then drifted for another 45 million years before finally reaching their present positions. And on this strange, wandering island, evolution seemed to come to a standstill. The mammals were still a primitive prototype in the jungles of this new Lemuria. Like a good daughter of Gondwana, the island of Madagascar was a territory dominated by the reptiles and amphibians, where plants and invertebrates formed the basis of the food chain. Arthropods, like this giant millipede, have inhabited Madagascar since its formation as an island. Its ancestors were ready to be found in the jungles of the distant Gondwana, and since then they have made it possible for the silent hunters of the forest to live. A person's chameleon, the largest chameleon in the world. There are two males on the same branch, and inevitably they are fighting. Like two caricatures of the colossal dinosaurs that dominated the Jurassic world, each chameleon uses its nasal appendage to try to throw its rival off the branch. These are two descendants of those reptiles torn from the continent of Africa when Madagascar became independent, and perhaps the most representative, because the chameleons have diversified here more than any other place in the world. 
Today, over half of all existing species of chameleons live on and are endemic to the island, and they have become the most numerous reptiles in Madagascar. Fights between these two giants are spectacular, but don't generally have serious consequences. All the violence is concentrated on the protuberances at the end of their heads. By pushing and occasionally biting, the rivals try to push each other off the branch. They do not have powerful teeth, and the nails are not designed for combat or hunting. So the only consequences will be a few bruises and one chameleon whose pride has been wounded. All the life forms that remained on the island were left behind as evolution hurtled on. Time stood still here, and among the creatures of the isolated Lemuria, evolution was marked by the ecological changes of the environment in which the species lived. But in the rest of the world, wherever the continental masses remained communicated, natural selection was imposing brutal evolutionary laws as a result of direct competition among increasingly well-prepared species. When India separated from Madagascar and crashed into Asia approximately 80 million years ago, the mammals were beginning their impressive diversification. Major geological and climatic changes produced new environments, new ecosystems whose resources were available for those beings capable of adapting to the new circumstances. New mountain ranges broke the winds and altered the rainfall patterns. Entire continental masses changed the currents, altering the climate of the whole planet. Deserts and marshes appeared, plains were flooded, and new jungles arose. Animals and plants had to adapt or die. And in this changing world, a group of mammals began to emerge supreme due to its capacity to adapt and diversify. The primates. The modern primates are descendants of those first mammals, those tiny insectivores that hid in the jungles of Gondwana. Today they have colonized all the continents, and the most adaptable species of all, man, has conquered the entire planet. In South America, still separated from the lands to the north, the primates were isolated and produced the so-called New World monkeys, such as the howlers and these capuchin monkeys. But in Africa and Asia, a group which scientists have called Old World Monkeys culminated in the appearance of man and the large modern pongids, the chimpanzees, the African gorillas, and the agile orangutans of Southeast Asia. The large simians, up to then the most intelligent animals in creation, had developed from ancestral primates, subjected to constant processes of natural selection in permanent competition with other species. But at a time when mammals had not even begun to develop their incredible capacity for generating new species, Madagascar had separated from Africa and had remained isolated in the Indian Ocean. 
How then can we explain the existence there of the enigmatic prosimians, which we now call lemurs? A broad-billed roller stands watchful guard in the Analamazatra jungle in the east of Madagascar. For the birds, it was easy to fly to the island crossing over the Mozambique Channel, but when they arrived, they found Madagascar already had other inhabitants. And some of their descendants are those this roller is observing. Today, there are almost 85 species of snake in Madagascar. When the island formed among the snakes that remained here, there was not a single poisonous one, and their descendants to this day remain loyal to their origins. But what worries the roller, which has just completed its nest, is not the poison. Almost all Madagascan snakes like eggs, and some have developed into skillful climbers. This Ithisifus, which the locals call the Fandre Fiala, is one of the most agile tree-climbing snakes in the jungles of Madagascar. Despite the thorny bark that surrounds the nest of the roller, the snake climbs up, testing the air with its forked tongue. But what the Ithisifus does not know is that the mother is watching his every move. And it is one thing to steal the eggs from a nest, quite another to challenge a broad bill determined to defend her offspring. When Madagascar became an island, the animals in its interior adapted to the conditions of its different ecosystems in order to avoid falling prey to the enemies that shared their isolation. And one of the most effective adaptations of all was camouflage. The constant vigilance of the roller detects a small gecko. These inoffensive reptiles are one of the groups that chose camouflage but in the jungles of Madagascar, you need to be constantly on the alert because your enemies, too, may have learned to hide. Looking just like a branch moved by the wind, this lance-nosed snake knows how to wait patiently, trusting in its extraordinary disguise. Among the dense vegetation, death slowly approaches its prey, advancing slightly, then freezing, again turning into a branch, while the roller, knowing her eggs are safe, is a silent witness to the drama unfolding below. The gecko feels safe among the leaves and without realizing stands right in the jaws of its mortal enemy. And in the isolated world of Lemuria, there are no second chances. The lance snow snake is not poisonous and so cannot rapidly kill its prey and has to attempt to choke it or swallow it alive. Little by little, the hunter moves the head of its prey into a position which makes it possible to begin swallowing it. The gecko fights with the last strength of desperation because once its head is inside the snake, it'll be impossible for it to breathe and it'll die. 
a futile struggle. The lance-nosed snake now holds it firm and is an expert hunter. It knows time is on its side, and again it waits. Now its prey cannot breathe and realizes its strength is running out. Before it has been swallowed entirely, the little gecko will already have died. The invertebrates, reptiles and amphibians of Madagascar already lived here when the island separated from Africa 165 million years ago. The birds and bats easily flew here, crossing the 400 kilometers of the Mozambique Channel. But the great enigma of the island, to which scientists have still not found an answer, is the origin of its land mammals. This is a brown lemur, one of the 33 known species of lemur that today live in Madagascar. Just a short distance away, another lemur, in this case a black and white one, observes its small, noisy relatives. All lemurs are herbivores and insectivores, and if resources are abundant, they avoid competition, being tolerant and even playful with other species. But this black and white lemur, who just wants a bit of peace and quiet, doesn't seem to be at all amused by his neighbors. The lemurs are the most representative animals of Madagascar and the ones with the most mysterious origin. In evolutionary terms, they are closer to the ancestral primates than more modern types of simians, and their appearance and behavior has led man to consider them since the time they were discovered as strange beings halfway between animals and spirits, which has earned them their name, Limur, a Latin world meaning the spirit of the dead. Nonetheless, these agile prosimians are quite simply the result of an evolutionary path different from that of the monkeys, large simians and human beings with which they share distant common ancestors. The lemurs are not the only land mammals in Madagascar. Among the half-light of the jungle floor, a group of ring-tailed mongooses approaches, sniffing in search of small prey. A family of lemurs attentively observes them. The mongooses do not pose a threat for the lemurs, but their appearance is very similar to that of the civet, the largest carnivores in Madagascar, and it's best to make absolutely sure and not let down your guard. In Madagascar, there are only nine species of carnivores, and all of them, except these civets, which were introduced by man from Asia approximately 2,000 years ago, are endemic to the island. The crowned lemur does not take its eye off them. These ring-tailed mongooses feed on insects, eggs and small rodents, so for the family of lemurs they are completely inoffensive. So both families ignore each other and the mongooses and crowned lemurs go their separate ways, continuing their search for food. A 
Except for the bats which flew here and those introduced by man since he first settled on the island, the origins of Madagascan mammals remains an enigma. All of them are unique in the world, and all of them appeared after Madagascar had separated from the continent. So scientists continue to come up with theories in response to a simple but inexplicable question. How did they get here? Four hundred kilometers of open sea separate the island from the African continent. This was the challenge for mammals that wanted to reach a land where there was no competition. Today there are two theories as to how they could have done it. One maintains that between 45 and 26 million years ago, when it is believed the mammals of Madagascar began to evolve independently, there were two land passes in the Mozambique Channel, which the mammals simply crossed on foot. But the most widespread theory speaks of a more exciting adventure, a journey across the channel on small islands of vegetation or floating branches. Like this intrepid gecko, small mammals could have also drifted across the sea and colonized the promised land of Madagascar. And those involuntary sailors would have been the origin of the diversity of endemic mammals on the island today. This family of ring-tailed lemurs is scuttling around the spiny forest of the Berenti Private Reserve in the south of the country. No other lemurs spend so much time on the ground as the ring-tailed ones, probably due to the aridity and precariousness of the habitat in which they live. The ring-tailed lemurs are the most and best studied of all Madagascan mammals. The naturalists that began to observe their behavior at the start of the 1960s discovered that they were the most easily observable species because they are diurnal and spend more time on the ground than any other lemur. The vegetation of the spiny forest in which they live does not provide food throughout the year and what food there is available is generally very dispersed and they need to look everywhere in order to find it. Like the spiny forest in which the ring-tailed lemurs live, the different ecosystems of Madagascar played a considerable part in the diversification of all the animals of the island. Its geographic position and the rock formation which divides it created very different climatic regions. From north to south and east to west, Madagascar becomes drier and warmer, and along this climatic gradient arose humid jungles, swamp areas, semi-desert regions, and spiny forests like this one. And in all of them, evolution gradually created unique creatures which would not appear anywhere else in the world. It has been calculated that in Madagascar there are close to 200,000 different species of living beings, of which 150,000 are exclusive to the island. Such is the power of this parallel evolution adapted to the conditions of the legendary Lemuria that each group shows extraordinary diversity of species which have developed in the course of thousands of years of isolation. Of the 135 species of chameleons that exist in the world, over half live exclusively in Madagascar. 
They are the most specialized lizards in the world, the ones best adapted to life in the trees. Their flat bodies enable them to move easily among the branches and absorb heat by exposing it sideways to the sun. Their prehensile tails help stabilize them on their risky movements among the treetops, and the fingers of their hands are fused together in two opposable groups by means of which they cling to the trunks and so climb with total security. They are expert hunters, camouflage taken to the extreme. Their bodies change color, their shapes are an imitation of the surrounding environment. Their immobility turns them into branches and leaves. And when they move, they look just like a part of the tree, rocked by the wind. Almost all the characteristics of their lizard bodies have been modified in order to better adapt to the environment in which they live. Here in Madagascar, they have developed their biological potential to the full. All the possibilities that the surroundings and genetics have been able to combine. And the result is extraordinary chameleons, ranging from this enormous Parsons chameleon over 60 centimeters long to the tiny members of the Bukesia genus, the smallest and most astonishing chameleons in the world. The Bruchesia are quite unlike any other chameleons, and not just in terms of size. While other species live in the trees, they prefer the dead leaves of the jungle floor. And it is precisely these leaves that their tiny bodies, no longer than 35 millimeters, imitate. While the rest of the chameleons compete for the trees of the jungle, the Bruchesia have an entire world for themselves. They have had to pay a high price for this achievement. They cannot radically change color, and their tails are only partially prehensile. But the Bruchesia do not need these skills in a world of dry leaves. And for as long as the jungle remains, this tiny chameleon's world is safe. Madagascar continues to change. In the interior, different jungles, mountains and wetlands conserve the unique natural heritage of a world of independent evolution. There are more endemic species here than any other place on Earth. And that means that each animal, each plant, and each ecosystem are irreplaceable pieces in the global ecology of our planet. The world that astonished Sclater, the inhabitants of the enigmatic Lemuria, are as strange as ever, as astonishing as ever, and as fragile as ever. In the singular Madagascar, they all live in a world for which there is no substitute anywhere else on Earth. And that, though it makes them extraordinary, also means they are extremely vulnerable. Evolution continues to act with slow but unstoppable force. The changes that led to the Sifakas or any other animal or plant in the world, including our own species, have not come to an end. But that life force of never-ending changes requires time, a great deal of time. And the drastic changes that man is causing in a matter of just a few years could break forever evolutionary lines which began with the origin of life on Earth.
In Madagascar, every corner contains fresh surprises. Every rock, every plant, every fragment of soil and every trunk of the jungle may contain worlds that science still has not discovered or understood. They are unknown universes and different living beings which you are now beginning to appreciate. And each one of these hidden creatures, each one of these apparently insignificant forms of life, sustains and contributes to the development of all life on the island. Many of the living beings of Madagascar still remain to be discovered. They are secrets that Lemuria still keeps for its ghosts for the silent beings that arose from millions of years of solitude. In the Atlantis of the South, night is drawing in. The Madagascan night reveals another life that until very recently had remained hidden to the eyes of man. The kingdom of the shadows brings the cover needed by these timid creatures of the dark. The spirits of the legends turn flesh, and life returns to the prehistoric jungles of Lemuria. The most recent genetic analyses indicate that all the lemurs derive from a single colonizing species similar to the present-day mouse lemurs or dwarf lemurs like this one. In the cold light of the moon, the sportive lemurs once more become active and search for fruits and small insects in the Madagascan night. Dwarf lemurs and sportive lemurs, giant rats, tenrex and mouse lemurs, the children of Lemuria again come to life. They are living shadows, animals of mysterious appearance and habits which have aroused fear among the indigenous population since those first human settlements 2,000 years ago. After many generations of living on the island, the Madagascan natives also have their theory of the origin of such strange animals. According to their legends, a man and a woman once walked together through the jungle. Shortly afterwards, the woman gave birth to a great number of children. As they grew, some of these children began to cut down trees and grow rice, while others continued to feed only on the leaves of the jungle. As time went by, the former began to fight amongst themselves. They were the ancestors of man. The others, horrified, sought refuge among the treetops and turned into lemurs. And since then, it has been known that humans and lemurs are brothers. Of all the present-day lemurs, none is as strange and mysterious as the Ai. They form a separate family with a single species, and their morphology and habits set them apart from all other prosimians. It is the largest nocturnal lemur and the last living examples hide in the different types of jungle of Madagascar. It is a strange appearance, and its nocturnal habits have inspired superstitions among native Madagascans. For some, they are the reincarnation of ancestral spirits and bring good luck, but for many others, they are an evil omen and immediately kill them, an unjust punishment for the crime of simply being different from all the other creatures of the forest. A long, fleshless middle finger helps it to extract the pulp from the canes and the larvae from the trunks where it feeds. No other lemur has such a tool, and no other has teeth which continue to grow more like those of a rodent than a prosimian. Today, the ayay, probably the strangest mammal in the world, is in danger of extinction. 
Like the rest of the lemurs and all the other animals of this independent world, it is being deprived of the exclusive habitats that made it the way it is, determined its evolution and have kept it alive to this day. And the reason is another mammal with which it shares distant ancestors, the small beings of the jungles of Gondwana. Its arrival brought cataclysmic changes and dark shadows fell over the extraordinary children of Lemuria. The action of man is devastating the wildlife of Madagascar. In the first thousand years of human presence on the island, two dozen species of large animals were destroyed, including 15 species of lemurs. Creatures like the elephant bird, the largest that has ever lived on Earth, or a lemur the size of a gorilla, disappeared forever at the hands of those invaders who came from Asia. Since the appearance of man in Madagascar, 80% of the original vegetation cover has disappeared, and in just the second half of the 20th century, 50% of the jungles that cover this country have been cut down. And while its ecosystems are being raised and burnt, Madagascar continues to astonish the scientific community, which each year discovers new species. These bamboo lemurs, the smallest of all diurnal lemurs, are an example of the critical situation of the exclusive animals of the island. Their jungle habitat is being cut down to provide more cropland because only in the jungle areas is there sufficient humidity to be able to plant rice. As they remove the protective vegetation, men hunt them because in the diet of these impoverished, needy people, proteins are always welcome. And those that are hunted are captured and sold as pets, or even worse, are burned to death when they set light to the impenetrable bamboo thickets. In the indigenous legends of Madagascar, men and lemurs are brothers separated by the vicissitudes of life. One abandoned the jungle and became the master of the world. The other remained and became a rarity, an ancient anachronism in a world of constant changes. And today, Madagascar has again brought them together to jointly decide their future. Madagascar is terribly fragile. Its habitats are different from all others on the planet. They are exclusive worlds with their own parallel evolution. Delicate and irreplaceable places, remote from the influences that shape the world and the animals of the rest of the planet. And man is now the decisive factor on which its future depends. The future of all its species. This is a world of endemic species, the demonstration of diversity, of the unlimited creative power of life. Here, new forms remain hidden, new evolutionary possibilities that would be unviable without the isolation this island has enjoyed for many thousands of years. And it also contains key pieces in the puzzle of the origin of our own species of the evolutionary steps which led us to becoming human beings. Humanity anxiously looks to the infinite solitude of the universe, dreaming of other inhabited worlds. And paradoxically, an entire world of fascinating unknown creatures is disappearing before our very eyes taking with it the secret of the origin of those mysterious children of the legendary Lemuria.